This video also is going to be very short, just looking at inverse trig with integration. And so we spent an entire day talking about the three integration forms that you should recognize that are inverse trig. Uh, the only ones we are looking for is arc sine, arc tangent, and arc secant. Uh, arc secant is not that common. I'm really going to focus my attention on arc sine and arc tangent because that's what you'll see on an AP test. And getting comfortable finding the different parts. Now you'll keep ha remember that when you're doing problems that use inverse trig, you don't just have a U and a D you have to worry about. You also have to worry about the A value, which is that constant that's in the denominator that has been squared. So when we come up with our list of U and DU, we're going to have that third component of A. Uh, we also want to get comfortable identifying which inverse trig function we have. And that is really going to focus on what's in the bottom. Is there a square root? Is there not a square root? If there is a square root, what's the order of the subtraction? So if you look at the first one, Again, kind of going through that same idea, I'm going to look in the denominator, and what I see is the square root. So that tells me it's definitely not an arc tangent. The next thing I'm going to look at is the order of the subtraction. Because it is constant minus variable, it's got to be an arc sine. So when I start this problem, I'm going to write down my u, my du, and my a, all focusing on it being fitting that arc sine model. So my u is what is in the bottom being squared, so it is x. The derivative of x is just 1 or dx, and the a value is what's being squared to get 16, so it's 4. Now we've got a little bit different problem here. This is a problem, we did want a couple like this in class, where you actually have too much in your numerator. You have a variable in your numerator and you have a constant in your numerator. The constant in the numerator will give me my inverse trig. The variable in my numerator is actually going to give me a totally different integration model. It is going to be more of a basic u sub. So this is an example of a problem where I'm going to pretzel. And after I pretzel, then I'll get to see where the inverse trig comes in. So I'm going to start the actual integration by rewriting it as two separate integrals. We're going to have x over the square root of 16 minus x squared. And then we're going to have minus 3 over the square root of 16 minus x squared two integrals that have the exact same denominator, but they integrate differently. The first one is actually a basic u sub integral. This is something that we would have been able to do back in the middle part of chapter 4. I'm going to start that down here. So my u is going to be the entire piece under the radical because my derivative has an x in it. So it is fine to do a basic u sub. My derivative is negative 2x. I will have a negative 1 half adjustment. So I'm going to have negative 1 half and then my u, the model, is it's being taken to the negative 1 half. That's what's being done to u. It's in the bottom being square rooted. So I'm going to integrate. The integral of u to the negative 1 half is positive 2u to the 1 half. My half and my 2 will cancel. So this part of my integral is negative u to the half, or in other words, negative square root of 16 minus x squared. So that is half of my problem done, that following a model from earlier in the course. If you look at the second piece, that's where I need to do this inverse trig model. So what I wrote up there, I am using, it's just I wasn't using until now. My u is the x, my derivative is dx, so I do not need to make an adjustment. I am going to be able to pull that negative 3 that's on top and just pull it out front. And my a is 4. My inverse trig model for, for sine is just the arc sine. So I'm going to bring the negative 3 out front. So it's going to be minus 3 arc sine of u over a. So my u is x. My a is 4. You can put this in parentheses if you like, plus c. One thing you'll notice if you look back to the forms while you're studying, arc sine is the only one of the three that does not have the 1 over a piece in front of the inverse trig piece. So that's why I don't have like a 1 fourth in front of this problem. I just have the coefficient that I brought out front. So that's the first one. Probably one of the more difficult types of problems because it is kind of two integration problems in one. One old part and one new part. Second one is going to be a lot faster. Uh, again, looking at the idea as far as seeing what trig function it looks like, it doesn't have a square root in the bottom. So that is the best indication that this is an arc tangent. Uh, we're going to write down our u, our du, and our a to make sure we have everything we need. Our u is what was squared in order to get e to the 4x. Well, what was squared to get e to the 4x? It must be an e to the 2x. The derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x. And the nice thing is you have a 2 you have an e to the 2x, you just don't have the 2. So my adjustment is a half. And then finally, my a value is what was squared to get 9, so that is 3. So I do have a 1 half adjustment, so I'm going to write that first. 
In addition to that, because it's an arctangent, arctangent has 1 over a as the coefficient. So in addition to the 1 half, I also have to put a 1 third out front. If you want to go straight to 1 sixth, that's fine. And then the form is the arctangent of u over a, so e to the 2x over 3 plus c. You can leave it like that, or if that just looks a little funny to you, you can multiply it together to be 1 sixth arctangent of e to the 2x over 3 plus c. So a little more straightforward, but I wanted to show you one where you had e's in it, because it is a common piece to throw in with inverse trig. I guess it's the way of testing two things at once. The last one. Uh, the last one, a little different because it doesn't have um, it doesn't have a square root, so it is an inverse trig. But if you look down on the bottom, it has a polynomial. It is not what we're used to with it, with inverse trig. Is we have a quantity squared plus another quantity squared, or a quantity squared minus another quantity squared. And in this case, it's not ready to fall into an inverse trig model. This was one of the ones we did in class where we have to complete the square, because uh, we need to get it to be something squared plus some other quantity. Uh, I can tell just by looking at this that it is going to be an arctangent, which is by far the most common completing the square one you'll see. And the reason I know that is because there's no square root. So when I complete the square, the process is to look at this middle term, this b term we call it, that 6. You want to take half of it and square it. So half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So that is the, what I need to complete the square. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow from the 45 that's there. We have 45 as my constant term. I need 9 of them to complete the square. So when I take 9 away from 45, I have 36 left. Now I'm going to write it as a quantity squared. This is the quantity x minus 3 squared. And the nice thing is 36 is also a perfect square. If it wasn't, that's OK. It just means you would have a square root whenever you determine your a value. But it does work out a little nicer whenever it is a perfect square. Now I'm going to make my list, my u, my du, and my a. u is the x minus 3, because that's being squared. du is just 1, or dx, so there is no adjustment. And a is 6, because that's what was squared to get 36. When I write my form, the 4 that's on top is not needed at all, so I'm going to bring the 4 all the way to the front. I'm also going to have a 1 over 6 out front, because it's an arc tangent, and that always has the 1 over a out front. So I'm going to have a 4 over 6 out front, or if you want to go straight to the fact that that's just 2 thirds when you reduce, I would accept 4 over 6, though, as well. Arc tangent of u over a, so u is x minus 3 over a is 6, plus c. So three problems. Really, within these three problems, you see everything we worked on, though. We talked about having to complete the square. We talked about ones that had to pretzel first. And we also talked about how we can look at some really different functions, like e functions, exponential functions, that can fall into inverse trig as well. So this review, combined with the derivative review, should make you ready for that quiz.